Today is an improved version of yesterday. Tomorrow will be better than today. That's the life we have and I want you to believe it. Heavenly Father, once again we thank you for bringing us to your presence. We thank you for the gift of abundant life that we have in you. Lord, we pray tonight, let your spirit bring power and dominion over every aspect of our life that is suffering, missing life, missing your own kind of life in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit divine tonight, we ask that you will breathe upon us afresh a breath of life, a breath of power, a breath of grace in the name of Jesus. As we go into your word in this few minutes, Lord, speak to us and let our soul be blessed in Jesus' name. For in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Praise the Lord. Let us be seated in his presence. I have just a few minutes to share with us tonight uh, on the topic, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. We have started this month, which is Christian our month, I'm alive. I'm alive. Say to your neighbor, I'm alive. Reassure yourself, I'm alive. Tell yourself, I'm alive. Because Jesus lives, I live. He lives, I live. That's the life that is in us. And God has come to tell us again and again that he has come to give us abundant life. We know the assignment of the devil. The devil is come to steal, to kill, and to destroy but the Son of Man has come to give us life. And thank God because life comes before death. Nobody dies if you have not been born. You understand? Life always precedes death. So life is superior to death. And that's what I want to share with us tonight. We know in the world that we have today. The Bible says, you know, um, a lot of things are happening. In the last days, loss of many shall was cold. Two more here and there uncertainty. But the promise of abundant life is what gives us the assurance that we can face the trials. We can face the hurdles. We can face the obstacles. And I believe once you contact this life, you will overcome in every area of life in Jesus' name. I say you will overcome in every area of life in Jesus' name. Tonight, our central uh, scripture is taken from Romans chapter 8 verse 1 to 2. And I'll be talking about the priceless benefits of spirit of life in Christ Jesus using this scripture. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 1 to 2, it says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. For the love of the spirit have set us free from what? The law of sin and death. The verse 2 is dependent on what, I mean, verse 1 is dependent on what verse 2 has come to do. He say, therefore, we are no longer under condemnation. Now, therefore, no condemnation. But without the gift of the Spirit, without the life of the Spirit, we can never have that testimony. He said, now, therefore, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life, there is a law of Spirit of life. There's a law. And there's also a law of death. What gives us the accomplishment of this testimony is the law of the spirit of life. And I want you to embrace this spirit of life. More than anything you can ask God for, it is the essence of your being. It is the essence of my being. If you don't have the spirit of life, everything we do will be emptiness. No satisfaction. Praise the Lord. One of the benefits of the spirit of life that we accomplish in our life, and these benefits are priceless, is that it will bring transformation. It brings what? Transformation. Romans chapter 8, 11 says, But if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Jesus, raised up Christ from the dead, shall also quicken your mortal body by a spirit that dwelleth in you. Are you looking for transformation? You've seen how caterpillar, 
you know, metamorphose into what? Butterfly. It's a radical change. It's a radical transformation. He said, you will now become a new man if you contact this life. He said, all things have passed away and everything has become new. This is the new life we are talking about. You can't experience this in the physical realm. You need the spirit of life to come in, into your being to experience this kind of radical life. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 15 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. If you are truly born again, everything about you in the past is gone. It's a forgotten issue. No matter what you have done, no matter what you have dipped your hand into, no matter the places you have been to, it's of no consequence in the sight of God. And that's why I will encourage someone here tonight. If you know you have not encountered this life, make sure before you leave the door, leave the these premises, give your life to Christ. You can walk up to any of the pastors who will lead you to Christ. Don't feel ashamed. Because with this, without this experience, you cannot make it in life. It will be struggle. Even though you can say you have made it, there is something you will be missing at the end of the day. Eternal life. And eternal life is not only talking about meeting Jesus or uh, being raptured. It's talking about living a life that you are happy, enjoying peace, tranquility in this life. You've heard of people who have money, but in, in the night they can't sleep. You have people who have all the wealth, but you could see that they are missing something. They feel like emptiness in them that they have not gotten what they are looking for. Even money cannot provide it. So I'm encouraging you tonight. This is the place where you can make a turn where you can have a turning point, experience, give your life to Christ. Give your life to Christ. And everything, whether you have committed abortion in the past, you have done all things that cannot even be heard. God is saying, if any man be in Christ, is what? A new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And that is God. It's not man. Man will be saying, okay, let me size you up. Are you qualified? No. In the sight of God, the moment you embrace the gift, and that's why this spirit of life is gift. It's not something you can earn. It's not something you can work for. It's the free gift of God. And once you accept it, it's an offer. Once you accept it, everything about your past is forgotten. Praise the Lord. Secondly, what do you enjoy by embracing the spirit of life? It's fruitfulness and abundance. John chapter 10, verse 10. But he say, I am come that they may have life and they may have it more what? Abundantly. This is what God is talking about. When you ask for abundance, many people, their mind goes to physical abundance. Yes, it's part of it, but it's very low compared to what God is saying in this scripture. Beyond your emotion, beyond your physical material, Abundance. He's talking about abundance of blessing, joy, peace in the Holy Ghost. This is what money cannot achieve for you. This is what money cannot buy. You have it beyond physical material blessings. This is the life God has called us into. That whenever you need anything, it will come up for you. Men, women, they will be at your beckon. You call on them, that money can buy people. You understand? You might say, okay, money, buy them. But if it comes to it, man can tell you, I don't need your money and you can't do anything except you kill the person. But when you have God, this kind of life, like Jesus will tell his disciple, go to that place, bring that donkey for me. That is the abundant life. I need the donkey that I've not been reading before to go into Jerusalem. Go and get, fetch me that donkey. And he went there and he picked it. The Lord needs of this. And he came. That is abundant life. He said, go to the river. The first fish you get, you will get money there. Who put the money there? That's the life of abundance. It's never stranded. You will never be stranded in Jesus' name. That's the kind of life God has called us to. I want you to embrace the spirit of life. Thirdly, victory over sin. We know the Bible said the wages of sin is what? Death. And the gift of life is the spirit of God. When you look at sin... Sin 
is what brings a lot of ills that we see around us. When you have the spirit of life, it will conquer sin. You need it. I need it. For us to go on in this journey of life. As a Christian, if you don't possess or you don't embrace the spirit of life, sin will mess you up. There are so many people who want to you know, get advice to leave sin. You can't get advice to leave sin. Advice can't do it. There is the power of the Holy Ghost that will force it out. And you cannot do that without having a relationship with the Spirit of God. You can't live above sin in your own power. And that's why many people have been frustrated trying to live above sin. They've used law. You will see other religions. They will say, oh, if you do this, they will stone you to death. To put fear into people. That can't solve it. Beating people can't solve it. Scolding them can't solve it. It is by the power of the Holy Ghost. This is the spirit that will take it from you. It will come to a point that when you see that sin, probably let's say lost, you are kind of person that giving to lost and you have tried everything. You can't help yourself. If the spirit of God takes over, if you give yourself, if you yield to him, surrender to him, have intimacy with him, he will just give you another mind renewable mind, a mind that is out of this world, that all those things will not interest you again. And you will begin to live a victorious life. And that's one of the things he does for us. Victory over sin. You will have victory over sin in Jesus' name. Internal hope. There is hope. John chapter 11, 25 says, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though we are dead, yet he shall live. I have said it. Every one of us will die. Yes, if, we, if the Lord starries and we have to experience rapture, we all go. But you should know that death is not final. Death is a horse that you go, you ride into another realm. It's a transitional life. When you have this life, you are not going to be separated from God. Anybody without the life of the spirit in him, when that person died, the grave hold on to that person. But when you have the life of the spirit in you, grave can't have power over you. You will resurrect. You will go. You will meet with Jesus. You will enter into heaven. Your reward will be given to you. And that is very important. That's the hope of eternal life. The kind of thing we have been waiting for. Because Christ will soon come. And we know that everything we have done in this world will end one day. But there is a place meant for us as children of God. As people of God, we need the spirit of life to take us there. You will get there in Jesus' name. Resurrection, restoration and renewal. Restoration and renewal. Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 5. Thus says the Lord God unto this bone. Behold, I will cause bread to enter into you. And ye shall have, ye shall live. The spirit of life has the power to break new life into anything. Is that your business, your career that is suffering, deadness. You could see that nothing is working in your hand. Once the Spirit of God blows air on you, breath on you, that thing will come back to life. And I see your career, your businesses, your finances coming back to life in Jesus' name. Everything representing dry bone in our life, in our family, they will all come back to life in Jesus' name. That's one of the benefits. It's part of it. It will restore. It will renew guidance and illumination. John chapter 16, 13. He said, how be it when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truths. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that he will speak, and he will show you things to come. That is what the spirit of life does. It gives us illumination. It gives us understanding, guidance, direction, knowing what to do. Many people are asking, should I travel abroad? Should I stay? When you have the spirit of life, we tell you what to do. There will be a prompting. If you need to move, if you need to go, it will tell you. But you cannot achieve this if you don't have a relationship with him. You cannot if you are in a place of business, in a place where there is noise. When you don't have communion with him, you can't experience it. He will guide you. And we know nobody can go beyond guidance from God. We need guidance at every point in time. Anything you want to do, whether major or minor, you need the spirit of life. 
and guide, guidance will come to you in Jesus' name. You, your path will be illuminated in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Lastly, love and compassion. Galatians chapter 5, 22 to 23. Say, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. There is no law. Are you the person you are here? You don't have that temperament. You are easily given to anger. Little thing, you are sparked up. It's, it means that you are missing out from the spirit of life. The spirit of life will calm you down. The spirit of life will give you meekness. The spirit of life will give you that love, that compassion. Now we are talking about coming out on Saturday to come and minister to people who are unreached. And God has helped you. You have contacted salvation. You don't show love. You can't love if you don't have the spirit. You will just be doing everything in the flesh. They said we should come to church and you rush down there because you want to mark register. But you need to have an experience with the spirit of God. That will help you. Even when you have not seen the results, you will wake up at night and pray for people. You will go out of your way, distributing tracts without waiting for church to call for evangelism. That is what the spirit of God can do. The spirit of life. He will give you understanding. He will give you the mind of God. He will make your will to be aligned with the will of God. And you will contact that in Jesus' name. Lastly, 8, empowerment for service. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. The Spirit of God, the Spirit of life empowers believers to go into service. Like I said, Pastor Andrew have called us for commitment. You won't be committed if you don't have this. You'll be tired. And that's why you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost to go in the journey of faith. If you don't have the Holy Ghost in you, you'll be tired. You will just find yourself going back. But when the Spirit of God is living in you and you have a relationship with him, whenever they call on you for service, you will always be there. You will not run out. You will not burn out in the name of Jesus. So we need him. We need this. And these are the gifts, the blessings that we can receive from the Spirit of life. Can we stand to our feet? Tonight, I've only told us eight things that the Spirit of life can accomplish in our life. He said he has given us the Spirit so that we will not experience death. God has called us to, to abundant life, a life that is called God kind of life, a life that has no limits, a life that cannot be put down, a life that cannot be put to shame. I want you to pray that as you journey in the faith, as you journey in the way of the Lord, that the Lord will empower you with this spirit of life. The spirit of life will radiate in your life. That anything that is even called dead in your, in your, in your life, in your career, in, your, in any aspect of your life, will come back to life. Open your mouth and pray. The Father, tonight I've heard the benefit of having the spirit of life in my life. Holy Spirit, I ask for you afresh. Bless me afresh. Minister to me afresh. Don't let me burn out, oh God. In the name of Jesus, I receive power to live above sin. In the name of Jesus, I receive power from you to be committed to your work, to love you, to love people, to be compassionate. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray. I wish somebody is praying. Lord, I pray, let the spirit of life begin to walk in my life. Let them see it. Let people see it. Every dry bone in my life and destiny. Lord God of heaven, bring it back to life. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Everlasting Father, we thank you once again. We thank you for speaking to us about the benefits of the spirit of life. God, you said today you present before us life and death. You said, but choose today life. We choose life. And we choose abundant life. Let the spirit of life breathe upon us afresh. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you.